Welcome to Coin Retrospectives, short histories of old coins. And these are the 50 state quarters, first released in 1999 and running through 2008. These circulating commemorative quarters saw massive success, with roughly half of the U.S. population checking their change for the coins and spawning millions of new numismatists. We're going to be going through every quarter design, plus the 2009 District of Columbia and U.S. territories, because if we don't, I just bought a lot of silver proofs for nothing. This will obviously be a multi-part video with the first video, this one, going over the history behind the program and the first five quarters. Let's get started. Originally dreamt up in 1995 by the Citizens Commemorative Coin Advisory Committee, or CCCAC, the program called for the current quarter design, first introduced in 1932 and designed by John Flanagan, to be replaced with circulating commemorative coinage featuring unique designs for each of the 50 U.S. states. It took about two years for the idea to gain traction, but eventually they found some support from Representative Michael Castle, a Republican from Delaware. Castle was initially cautious about supporting the idea, but what got him to fully get on board was the Mint Director Philip Deal's suggestion that the coins be released in the order of their admission to the Union. And as Delaware was the first to ratify the Constitution, Castle's home state would be the first quarter design released. Hey, who says a little schmoozing doesn't get things rolling? Anyway, despite having the support of Castle, the CCC, AC, and the Mint Director, the Treasury Department opposed the idea. The Mint had been releasing a lot of commemoratives recently, and they feared the public was getting tired of them. It took a congressional mandate to get the Treasury Department to capitulate, which came off the pen of President Bill Clinton on the 1st of December, 1997, and the 50 States Commemorative Coin Program Act was on. Five quarter designs would be released every year, one approximately every 10 weeks, in the order of either their signing of the U.S. Constitution or their admission into the Union. Designs would be up to each state to submit to the Secretary of the Treasury for approval and sent back to the states for a final design selection. There were a few restrictions in place, such as no state flags, living persons, or dead people's busts were to be allowed. About two-thirds of the states simply had the governor decide which of the final designs to choose, but the other third had public votes. And those public votes served to intensify anticipation and eventually demand for the new quarters. I remember receiving my first Delaware quarter, walking out of a showing of Austin Powers, the spy who shagged me, and I was delighted. Large map boards with 50 quarter size holes were sold. This was a massive thing. By the end of the program in 2008, it was estimated that 147 million Americans had collected the state quarters. That's 48% of the population at the time. So now that you know the history behind the program, let's get into each quarter's design. For Delaware, the man on horseback here is Caesar Rodney, a founding father of the U.S. and the fourth president of Delaware. His depiction here is of the night of the 1st of July, 1776, where he rode 70 miles through a thunderstorm from Dover, Delaware to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Second Continental Congress was voting on independence the next day, and Rodney's presence helped to sway the vote to yes. And as the first U.S. state to ratify the Constitution in 1787, Delaware's coin features their official nickname, the First State, giving Delawareans everywhere delusions of grandeur. The Pennsylvania State Quarter features a state outline, which will become a common theme, a keystone fitting for the Keystone State, and a depiction of the Commonwealth statue that sits atop the Pennsylvania State Capitol in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. This statue, nicknamed Miss Penn, or the Spirit of the Commonwealth, was installed on the dome in 1905. The coin also features the state motto, Virtue, Liberty, Independence. 
New Jersey's quarter design features an engraving of Washington crossing the Delaware, a painting that depicts, you guessed it, George Washington crossing the Delaware River on Christmas Day in 1776 to attack a Hessian detachment at Trenton, New Jersey. It's a pivotal moment in the Revolutionary War as it gave the Continental Army a severely needed morale boost after their losses in New York. So important was this moment that it's actually been featured on two coin reverses. The 2021 Washington Quarter features another engraving, this time by Benjamin Swords. Now it's unlikely that George would have struck such a powerful and inspiring yet very dangerous pose on these Durham boats slashing through the ice chunk filled Delaware River, but hey, he was a badass, so I'll let it slide. The Georgia State Quarter features, again, a state outline containing a peach, the official state fruit. The sprigs or branches on either side of the outline are of the live oak, which is the Georgia State tree, and the state motto is also here, wisdom, justice, moderation. What's interesting about this quarter though, is that the state outline skips Dade County. This is due to an urban legend that during the Civil War, Dade County seceded from the Union, despite that not being a thing, and then seceded from Georgia, despite that definitely not being a thing. It isn't true, but because of their remote location in Georgia being blocked off by Lookout Mountain, Dade County stayed pretty much independent until 1939 and issued a proclamation in 1945 declaring that Dade County was indeed an actual part of the United States. You know, just in case. The Connecticut State Quarter features the Charter Oak, a white oak tree that grew on Willis Hill in Hartford, Connecticut. It acquires its name due to it being the hiding place for the Connecticut's Royal Charter of 1662. During an incident in 1687 when the British Governor General Edmund Andros attempted to confiscate it. He ostensibly wanted to Connecticut it up. <clears throat> so important was this tree that this is the second coin bearing its likeness. The 1935 Connecticut commemorative half dollar also honors it. The tree was blown down by a very violent storm on the 21st of August 1856. And if you're watching this on the day I've released it, that's exactly 166 years ago. Those being the first five quarters, let's talk a moment about varieties and errors. Some 1999 state quarters were struck on experimental planchets intended for the Sacagawea dollar. These quarters weigh heavier and are a different color and go for thousands of dollars. The only other error to discuss is the Delaware spitting horse. A die break at the tip of the horse's mouth makes it appear as though it is spitting. It can go for something in the tens of dollars, but it would probably go for a lot more were the die break at the other end of the horse. So that's part one, a history of the 50 state quarters program and the first five quarters. If you enjoyed it, please do let me know. If you have suggestions for what I should cover after I finish this series, please let me know that as well. As always, please consider subscribing and make sure to leave your two cents in the comments and have a great day.